What's up dudes? So it's been almost a year since I've done the Cadillac swap on my 2015 WRX. Uh, I wanted to give you some feedback on that today. When I, when I first did this install, I just did everything to the front. So I did the Cadillac Brembo's in the front and then StopTech brake pads um, with stainless steel lines. And I was noticing definitely brake bias, yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, so I was really concerned um, and wasn't sure if I was gonna have to go ahead and get like rear Brembo calipers. Um, I'd have to go with, you know, something from Subaru, but if you get the right ones, it's direct bolt on. So that's a really good thing. And then as far as that, like they have a higher resale value. This kit is not gonna have any resale value, hardly at all. Uh, there might be a few people that wanna pick it up but if you go into it, um, it's not an investment. It's definitely a loss at that point. So a serious downside of this kit is that you do have to use the bracket. You have to drill um, the knuckle holes and then I think tap the top one if I remember correctly. So there is a problem with that. Uh, this is the only car that I've seen with this kit in person, but I know that I have this problem and I have some pad overhang. I'll show you guys that because I'm going to change out the pads today. That is a concern of mine. Um, it doesn't seem like it's affected the braking power too much. Um, I'm not getting really any brake fade. But the pad overhang is kind of unsettling. It's If I would have known that there would have been pad overhang with this kit, I wouldn't have bought the kit. Um, Another red flag was tapping and drilling into the holes. So with those things, um, I really, I can't recommend the kit. If you guys can save your money and buy something from an 08 to, well, I guess 2016, 2017 STI, uh, that would definitely be the way to go because you're just doing it the right way. It's a direct bolt on. You don't have to worry about you know the dreaded part out down the road if that ever happens to you uh, you won't have to worry about you know putting back on the stock brakes and trying to figure out if you're going to put on new knuckles or you're going to trade the car with uh, the Cadillac Brimbos and how's that going to go you, you know that's definitely going to decrease uh, the money you get from the dealer so if I had to do again I probably would not get the Cadillac Brimbos um, I would definitely go with the Subaru Brimbos and kind of just eat the cost of that price. As far as the pad overhang, it could have be it could be the way that I installed these. I could have installed these incorrectly. Um, that's definitely a possibility. But when I was looking around Mazioc, there are some guys that are having the same issue. So it's not just an isolated incident on my behalf. Um, now, how many people are coming forward and, and saying that they have issues? I don't know how many people are actually into having to change their pads after putting the swap on their car. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure there'll be some people out there that say uh, they're not installed correctly, but since there are other people on Nazioc that have the same issue with the pad overhang, that should raise some concern. So the kit might not be as developed as it should be. Or some people just don't care about pad overhang. I have no idea. But for me, it is concerning. And it's not something I like because it's rubbing the end of the rotors and it kind of is making this lip um, where the pad will, will hang over the rotor and then you'll get some noise in winter time like your brakes are, or your pads are scraping the rotors. I don't like it at all, but at this point, um, kind of reverting these changes is going to be expensive. It's going to mean replacing the knuckles, putting back on the stock brakes, and then trying to find another big brake kit, whether it be STI Brimbos or um, some other third party. What do they do for me? Um, Actually, you know, I'll go out back road driving before I'd run into some brake fade for sure. Um, definitely with the stock pads and stock setup altogether. Um, maybe like 20 to 30 minutes of 
fairly hard driving. The brakes would definitely fade. Pedal was super mushy. So I saw these come up and it seemed like a really good thing. Um, they were cheap. They're like maybe $80 a piece for each caliper. And that's four pot caliper Brembo's. Um, you can't get that with the Subaru Brembo's. Like those things go for a thousand bucks by themselves. And the whole kit that I put up on the front of this car with the brackets, the calipers, pads, uh, stainless steel lines was just under like $900, you know, 800 to $900 is, is what got me Brimbos in the front of my car. I figured I'd show you uh, the fitment I have. I actually was able to get these Cadillac Brimbos under 17 inch wheels. They just barely clear without any modification, um, any grinding of the Brimbo caliper right here. Since my wheel weights are on the inside or closer to the spokes, I did have to grind down uh, the back side of the Brembo. But since they're only like $80 a piece, I didn't really care. I didn't really, you know, if they were STI Brembos, I definitely wouldn't have ground them down. Um, and I think actually STI Brembos will fit under these wheels. Um, the fitment looks just really insane. I mean, you know, these, these calipers in here look really big in the, inside this wheel. And if they were a different color, um, it would definitely show that they look bigger for sure. So that's pretty cool. I do like that. Um, now once I get these, once I put my 18s on the car, uh, it does gap out and it does just kind of look like normal Brimbo calipers. Okay. So since I do have this Top Tech pads, they do put off quite a bit of dust. So that is a downside to Stop Tech. Although pads for this for these uh, Cadillac Brimbos are like $40 for the front set, man. So that's really hard to beat. It's kind of worth living with a little bit of brake dust or excessive brake dust. <laughs> uh, anyway, so here's some of the grinding down I had to do on the top to fit my 17s with the wheel weights. Like I said, if the wheel weight was further inside, I really wouldn't have had to grind these down at all. We'll say punching out the pins on the Cadillac Brembo's is a lot easier than the Subaru ones. Subaru ones you have like a little pin you have to pull out first from this side and then punch them through and when you put them back in you have to actually like line up a hole and then put the pin back in. It can be a pain in the butt if you don't have patience or if you don't put them in right. But these are a lot easier. So you just gotta slide these pins out. Which is a retaining bracket from flying out. And just remove the pin. Alright, so with the pins removed um, and the bracket removed, you guys can see the pad overhang right here. It's overhanging the edge of the rotor. So, right here. That is brake pad, and that's because the brake pads aren't lining up correctly with the rotor. So that's the problem I have with these, and sometimes in the winter they make noise, like a scraping noise will come from the front. It's caused from this pad overhang, so not happy about that. You can see the rotor moving, and then the pad has been worn down, and the overhang is still there. Not a fan. Try to get these pads out and I'll give you a better view of the lip on that pad overhang. So this has the most amount of overhang right there. And that sometimes causes noise. 
Uh, these pads look like they could have gone a little longer before being changed. I went ahead and pulled the driver's side. So you can see the pad overhang here as well for the driver's side. Um, now, if I would have screwed up the insulation, you would kind of think that I might have got it right on one side if that were the true problem. But since there's pad overhang on both the driver and uh, passenger side, it kind of leads me to believe that this kit might not be as developed as it needs to be. Again, um, if pad overhang is something that bothers you with this kit, I suggest staying away from it. But um, here's the StockTech pad number that I've been using for the brake kit. This is for the, the Cadillac Brembo's. All the pads are fairly even as far as the wear on the pads themselves. One side is not um, more ground down or than the other on all the pads, so they look pretty even. That's my experience with the Cadillac Brembo's and my one year review. Hopefully that's helped you guys out a little bit. So the high points of the kit are uh, a better braking system. I'm definitely positive they, they offer more braking power for a longer period of time, for sure. Would match with the right pads and the lines and the fluid. Um, the downside is that you do have to drill into your knuckles. So if you want to revert those changes, it's going to be really costly and it might not be something a lot of people want to do. Subaru brakes are already out there for the STI, so if you do save up a little more money, um, you get a direct bolt-on, everything fits fine, you're not going to have pad overhang issues, and you get that same braking power. Those brakes were meant to go for this car, so what I mean by that is they have the right brake bias. You've got the right brake bias up front with the four pots, and then you've got the right brake bias in the rear with the two pots. So the car is going to have a really good braking bias if you get the whole set. Um, with this, you're kind of playing around, you're taking a gamble, you might have to go with a more aggressive pad in the rear uh, to keep that same braking balance. CVTS makes kits for like Subaru, Nissan, BMW, not sure what else. Not sure of the, if anyone else is having the issues outside of Subaru, but I can confirm that you know people on Nauseac are saying that they are having pad overhang issues. So if that's an issue for you, I'd stay away from this kit um, and, and go with the direct bolt on Subaru kit for sure. So hopefully that's helped you guys out a little bit and I'll catch you on the next one.